My name is Bradley Drummond, and in this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of the entire DSP section of our Connect Series amplifiers. So to get started, you're going to click on the amplifier here to get into the DSP section. So once you click on there, we've got all these blocks across the top for all the different sections of the DSP. So starting from left to right, we've got the input section, we have general channel settings, the signal generator, the crossover, EQ, the limiter, and load monitoring. So just taking you left to right, first we're in the input section here. So this is where you've got primary and secondary inputs for each of your channels, and it's a full routable matrix. So any of your inputs can be selected on any of your primary and secondaries on any of the channels. If you're selected on analog, you've got sensitivity settings for 26 dB and 34 dB. You've got a level attenuation slider here, which you can use by clicking and dragging to slide it left and right. You can use these arrows to bump up and bump down the signal, or you can click on the value here and type in any number that you want. On the right side here, you've got input meters for primary and secondary with clip indicators across the top. And you've also got an output meter with clip output indication as well. For secondary input, you've got the exact same settings here with all the different inputs selectable, same level control as you have on primary. At the bottom here, you have override mode for override between the primary and secondary signals. So in this first mode, auto override primary input, say you've got background music playing on your primary and you have a microphone paging system on the secondary. The signal will play the background uh, music on the primary until it detects something on the secondary. So when it detects that the microphone paging system is active and there's signal coming in, it'll take over and then it will switch back to the primary once that uh, signal is gone on the secondary. In the other mode here, signal sensing override, this is like your traditional failover mode. So say you've got a Dante signal on your primary and you've got an analog backup on your secondary. Well, say the Dante network crashes, well, it will immediately kick over to the analog backup. Once the Dante network kicks back in again, it'll immediately switch back to the Dante network on primary. So next, we've got the general channel settings. So this is where you can name the actual channels. So let's call it, you know, speaker one. Whatever you want to name it, you can type that in here. This is also where you can change the mode for the output. So you can change between uh, low Z and then high Z 100 volt or high Z 70 volt. Once you go in any of the high Z modes, there's a secondary high pass filter that engages here. So by default, it's set to 70 hertz, but you have the ability to change this between 35 hertz and five kilohertz. The reason this is here is to protect the speaker uh, transformers from oversaturation. Next section here is for smart power bridge. So this is where you can enable the smart power bridge on each channel, uh, one channel at a time per amplifier. So what this does is it will double the power of that channel with uh, keeping pretty close to the same rated power on all the remaining channels. Channel standby at the bottom. So this is where you can fully disable an individual channel rather than turning off an entire amplifier. So say you've got a speaker that's blown that you want to go repair on one specific channel. Well, now you can disable that channel rather than turning off the entire amplifier. The next section here is the signal generator. So there's three different signals, pink noise, white noise, or tone. Uh, when you're set to tone, you can select the frequency anywhere between 20 hertz and 22 kilohertz. Once you choose the type of tone that you want, you've got individual enable and then level control for each channel here all the way down. The next section is the crossover. So crossover, we've got plus or minus 15 dB of bandpass gain, up to 100 milliseconds of delay on every channel, positive negative polarity, and then we have a low pass and a high pass filter. You can select anywhere from 6 dB per octave up to 48 dB per octave, Butterworth, Linkwitz, Riley, and Bessel filters. At the top here, there's a speaker tuning section. So this is where you can export all of the channel settings, which would include everything from all of the blocks of DSP at the top here, 
and then you have the ability to re-import them across any other channel or any other amplifier. So these files work across all the different models in the entire Connect Series range. In the next section, we've got the equalizer. There's eight uh, filters per channel, and you've got some options for parametric, 6 dB HP and LP shelf options, and 12 dB per octave HP and LP shelf. You've got full gain control, frequency, and Q for each of those filters. So to enable it, you just click here. When it's blue to the right, the filter is enabled. When it's left and gray, the filter is disabled. The next section here is the limiter. So we've got an RMS limiter. This is really your long-term uh, limiter. It's set in voltage for threshold, and then you've got attack and release times anywhere between one second and 10 seconds. Below this, it says speaker limiter. So this will show you the amount of dB reduction that the speaker limiters from the user definable limiters here are putting on the amplifier if it's engaged. Below that is the protection limiter. So this is more of an internal limiter. This is not controlled by the user, but this is to keep the amplifier out of uh, thermal or if the power supply is gonna be overdrawn, it'll show you that it's doing some reduction in output to keep the amplifier safe. Underneath this section, it also shows you the live RMS voltage output. And then next we've got the peak limiter section here. So this is really your fast acting limiter like you would normally see in a DSP. Again, it's set to a threshold in voltage. And you've got attack and release time anywhere from one millisecond up to one full second. It shows the same speaker limiter and protection limiter gain reduction values here, but now it also shows you the wattage RMS out on that channel. In the last section here, we've got the load monitor. So enable the, uh, enable the load monitor, you click on this, this tab here. When it's to the right, it's enabled in blue. When it's to the left in gray, it's disabled. So this does continuous impedance measurement of the output. So what you can do is set a low limit for impedance and a high limit by clicking on these two sliders here. You can also click on the numbers and type in a value. So what it will do is if it measures the impedance and it's inside of this window, it'll keep saying that it's okay and everything's fine. If it measures impedance outside of the window, either above or below, then it will report that there's an error. So thanks for watching this video on all of the DSP of our Connect Series amplifiers. Make sure to follow us on our social media on the side of the screen here. Subscribe to our YouTube channel down below and we'll see you guys in another video.